Is it me guys or is it 2021 all over again? I mean, we got Tesla to 3000, we got Palantir to 500, SoFi to 500. I even saw Neo to 1000. Now, yes, I agree. These are all great companies and I think they're all gonna do great long-term and I actually own them all. But are these prices realistic? I mean, are they actually possible? And honestly, more importantly, there's a very uncomfortable truth with all this that I'm gonna share with you guys today that you absolutely have to know. So I'll discuss all that right after you gently tap that like button and consider subscribing to It's super easy to do if you like the truth without the hype. And even though we're gonna talk about things like Tesla at 3000, if you wanted to see my buy alert on Tesla at 104, Google at 83, Palantir in the low sixes, SoFi in the fours, and a whole bunch of others, make sure you take advantage of the Father's Day flash sale that is live now for my private group where you get all those buy and sell alerts, you get my watch list with price targets, you can take five courses for free. We actually have a stock analyzer tool coming very, very soon that's gonna be completely free for members and a ton more. Just check out the pinned comment down there and see if it's right for you and make sure you take advantage of this sale before it goes away. All right, so before we get rolling too far here, this is not intended to be a troll of anybody else's videos or a knock on anybody else or anything else like that. So please don't take it that way. I'm not disrespecting anyone. There's no need to run to them and say, hey, did you see what Luke said about you? Which they probably won't care because they're all probably a lot bigger than me. I'm just a little guy in this pond, guys. I'm not a big guy, but nonetheless, it's not intended to say that at all. And some of the videos made great, great, great points, but I also can see how it can steer some folks in the wrong direction here. So I wanted to kind of talk about this uh, specifically and kind of address it from a different angle than all those other videos addressed it from. So I'm gonna kind of break this down into two categories here because honestly, the difference is really, it's just massive guys. So I gotta kind of break it down in two different categories. We'll start with the unprofitable companies first, then we'll talk about the profitable companies second because they're really two different categories altogether, especially when you're making projections and long-term projections and things of that on the company. You gotta kind of delineate between those two. So let's kind of start right there with the uh, unprofitable place first. So let's discuss Neo first. And I gotta say, they don't even have a path to profitability right now, much less any uh, real chance of seeing that share price, you know, $1,000 per share anytime soon. And to actually break it down and see how much revenue they have to generate, even if we're very generous with the margins and a lot of other things, the number of cars they would have to sell to reach that share price, especially given the Chinese discount on stocks, is just incredible. I'm sorry, right now, that kind of talk is just, honestly, it's kind of insane. I mean, now, obviously, if they can move downstream effectively and still somehow maintain margins, which they have not been able to do before they move downstream effectively, so that's a big if, then maybe we can have a discussion about Neo maybe being in that ballpark years and years and years and years down the road. But for now, we need to get out of that place first. We need to basically get to that path to profitability, at least see a path, then actually generate the revenue to get ourselves there, and then see the margins and everything else come up to a point to where we can really make an accurate projection forward to see is that number actually a realistic number or not for Neo. Otherwise, in my mind, in my opinion, there really is no basis for this whatsoever. So now over to SoFi and, and the $500 number for SoFi. And uh, if I'm looking at it when compared to Neo, they're further down the train in terms of profitability, in terms of having predictable revenue, predictable uh, you know, EPS, some things like that than Neo is. But they're not all the way there yet, guys. So although that price could be realistic if I'm really uh, looking forward and really trying to be very, very generous with my projections, the reality is there's some things actually working against SoFi moving forward that are not working against SoFi right now. And I know that, that you know, some of the bulls don't like that. I'm sorry, I'm very bullish on SoFi. You guys know that. I was loading a boat every time it was in the fours and the fives all year long last year, it seemed. But there are some truths that we absolutely have to talk about in regards to SoFi. SoFi is going a lot of places to include traditional banking. And with traditional banking means you're going to see those growth rates slow. And you're going to start to see things like regulation and a lot of other compliance issues like that start to creep into SoFi's business that they've not had to deal with before that will absolutely slow growth, increase expenses, and although they're creating efficiencies everywhere, I agree there, it does not mean that as you start melding more and more into that world, there's not going to be headaches and hurdles. Now, sure, does it continue the growth? Absolutely. Do you need to go there in order to do anything big long-term? Absolutely you do. But then on the same point, you can't complain if you start to see those growth rates slow from the crazy growth rates for some of the products they're putting out now. And I'm talking in the future here, guys. And then second point is as you look more and more like a traditional bank, expect Wall Street to continue to put more and more of a traditional bank, uh, you know, multiple on SoFi. You know, you can't say you're fintech this and fintech that, but then 50% of your revenue or more is generated from traditional business lines of, you know, banking business. 
It's just kind of one of those things. And I was just throwing out random numbers there, guys. Take your pick. The point is, if you can't look at it as anything other than a bank, and we'll see if Wall Street decides to lump them into a basically a uh, you know traditional bank setting, or do they decide to create a new category altogether? We don't know at this stage. Are they always going to leave them kind of over there with PayPal and you know Square and some of those? I don't think they are. Or Block, I guess. Sorry. Yeah. Anyways, the point being, I don't think they're going to put them over there. I think they're going to move them more towards the traditional bank side, which means that multiple is going to come down, regardless of whether we think they're different. Um, regardless of whether we think you know they're cutting edge and traditional banks are old legacy, it doesn't matter. The reality is, is in order to get SoFi to a $500 price target per se, you need big money into that stock. It's not going to be done by us retail. Sure, absolutely, we can push it from five to ten all day long. Not a problem there. But in order to push it, you know, into the $500 range, you're going to have to have big money in, and they're just not going to reward SoFi with the same multiple that us as retail investors think that they deserve and think that they're performing at. So those are things that I won't say are working against SoFi, but they're the reality is of their trek towards 500 being a lot harder than what you think it's going to be to hit that number, if they can ever even get to that number, depending upon how everything falls out and how they execute. Don't get me wrong, I love the company, and if it goes there, I'm gonna make a lot of money, but at the same point, you guys come here for the truth out the hype, and I gotta be honest with you guys and just kinda say, hey, that number right now to me looks awful speculative. And yes, we will get to the uncomfortable truth here in just a second, guys, I promise. It's not gonna be fun, I'm sorry, but you know, it is gonna be something you absolutely need to hear. So let's jump on over to the profitable companies now, and of course, we'll start with Tesla because, I don't know, everything starts with Tesla, it seems. You got the $3,000 price target that's out there, and you guys have heard me talk about it before when it was released. It's based upon a lot of things that I don't think are going to happen. I'm sorry, it, it just, I don't think FSD and RoboTaxi are gonna be at scale in that time frame that's being put out there by Kathy Wood and her team. Now, everybody will point to me and say, hey Luke, um, you forgot she hit the price target last time when everybody thought she was crazy and everything else. And I would say to you, guess what? None of her thesis for that price back then whenever it hit that crazy price target played out. None of those things happened. Elon bailed her out by executing on a scale that nobody saw coming. So basically, if I were to say something like, uh, I don't know, let me be a bear here for a second. If I was going to say, you know what? I think Tesla is going all the way down to $80 per share, $50 per share. I'll, I'll do $50 per share because I think that, you know, everybody's just going to turn against EVs and nobody's going to want to buy EVs next year. So demand is just going to dry up. It's going to go away and nobody wants Teslas. Let's say it fell away down to $50 because Elon was involved in a fraud scandal of some sort. Let's just say that. It was my bare thesis, I guess I should say, right? Because I said demand for EVs was gonna dry up. No, not at all. EV demand didn't dry up. It continued to produce quarter, record quarter, after record quarter, after record quarter. Nobody had on their radar Elon getting caught up in a scandal and dragging the stock down to $50. That doesn't mean that their bear case was right. It just means that something happened that happened to coincide with that. They actually got the call wrong. I got the call wrong with that one, but because of a different thing happening, my case in terms of the dollar amount still came out to be right. So that's kind of what I mean by this with Tesla in regards to this high price target. I don't see a path there now. Now that does not mean Elon cannot execute to that point later on. I think out of the group of stocks that we're gonna talk about here today, they probably have the best chance of reaching that price target. But in regards to me thinking it's gonna happen for the reasons that happened there and in the time frame that was put out there for it to happen, I just don't see it. Now, I'm happy to be surprised. Like I said before, I stand to make a lot of money. It's not like I'm going to sell or anything else like that. I stand to make a lot of money. But for now, I tend to kind of temper that expectation. And if I get rewarded again, regardless of whether Kathy's thesis plays out or something else happens that pushes Tesla there, I'm happy regardless. And finally, let's talk about Palantir here. And you guys know we've been on this stock for a long, 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 long time. We love the stock. However, their growth rate is a little bit tricky to project out. That, that would be kind of the first thing that kind of goes on there with Palantir. Not that I think they're not going to grow or anything else like that, but it's definitely very tricky to play out. And more importantly, once kind of the AI hype dies down, what multiple, since they just turned profitable, is Wall Street going to be willing to attach to a stock like Palantir? We just don't know the answers to that yet, so it makes it really, really hard to project out. And then more importantly, given their growth rate, regardless of whether you want to give it a 20% or a 30%, 25%, Wherever you fall on that on that kind of timeline there, in order for us to reach 500, are we, you know, five years out, seven years out, eight years out, 10 years out? None of those would surprise me at all. And that leads us to the uncomfortable truth with all of this. And that is that you can make projections out in a year with fairly reasonable accuracy as to where the stock may or may not be. Two years, it gets a little murky, but you can, you can still do it. 
Three years out, it's it's really murky, guys. I'm sorry. And anything beyond five years, you know, basically five years and beyond is pure speculation and a guess. I'm sorry, those are just guesses anytime you move out that far. And that basically means these numbers are just pure speculation. We don't know what's going to happen. And a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are based upon everything going perfect. Uh, you know, the best case scenarios happening, everything staying stable during that time frame, and a lot of other factors, just basically the entire spectrum going perfect, great, wonderful, exactly how you planned out, which of course is the exact opposite of how the actual market works. How many people back in 2021 who were bullish on Tesla modeled out, you know, this crazy inflation slash, you know, highest interest rate, you know, or the quickest interest rate raise, you know, in the history of interest rate raises from the Fed and had Tesla in 2023 at $104 a share. I don't think anybody had that model out. I don't think you could have modeled that out. And that's kind of the point I'm making is a lot of these models that yes, you can build them. Yes, you can model out to 2030 or 2040 or 2050 or something else like that, but you are purely speculating at that stage. And to me, in regards to your investing and your decisions today, those are absolutely useless to you as an investor to model it out that, except for, for fun. Of course you can do it just to kind of give a best case scenario or something like that, but you have to understand it is pure speculation. Nobody had Tesla, even at two, you know, whatever the heck we're at today, 250 something, whatever. Nobody had that on their radar in 2021. Uh, the bears did, but I'm talking people that are bullish on the stock who believe in the stock long-term and modeled this thing out. You couldn't model this out at all. It wasn't something that you can model. And unfortunately, that's the way any 10 year period in a stock works. There are things that happen to the stock. There are things that happen to the economy. There are things that happen to the market. There are all sorts of other factors that come into play that create timeframes and scenarios to where that doesn't actually play out. And if it was easy as plug it into a spreadsheet and bam, there's a projection for every stock. So then you know every stock to buy, there'd be a lot more trillionaires out there, but there just isn't for a reason because they may not execute to that. Elon may get bored and go some other place and the new guy that comes in can wreck the whole thing. That's happened to lots of great stocks, great companies. They've had changes in CEOs and what do you know? The stock and the company went nowhere for, in some cases, a period of a decade or so until they got that guy out, got somebody new in there, and then the stock started marching up again because the company started executing again. You can't control all the government stuff that goes on. You can't control geopolitical stuff. All the other things that go on out there will all come in factor whenever you start trying to project out five years or 10 years or things of that nature. So for me, I like to do them. If you're gonna do them, do them for fun. But beyond doing it for fun, I'm not sure it provides a whole lot of value for you as an investor, again, beyond the fun. And more importantly, when you're trying to make decisions today and trying to decide, is this the right stock for you? You know, should I buy today? Should I not? That becomes something that to me, I would not even include in your calculus. And more importantly, it could actually mess up your calculus because now you have a speculative number out there that you have no idea if it will get there or not. It may actually surpass your number, right? I mean, I can point to a lot of stocks that I own that there was no way I've dreamed that they could ever be where they're at right now. And they've exceeded all expectations, you know, a thousand fold. That happens too, to the upside. So, you know, there's all sorts of things like that, that just too many things can happen in a five year period or even a 10 year period, uh, definitely in a 10 year period that are going to make these numbers seem obsolete, whether that's to the upside or to the downside. And to me, that's why I don't make decisions based upon that. Make sure you take advantage of the Father's Day flash sale that is live now for my private group where you get all those buy and sell alerts, you get my watch list with price targets. You can take five courses for free. We actually have a stock analyzer tool coming very, very soon. That's gonna be completely free for members and a ton more. Just check out the pinned comment down there and see if it's right for you. And make sure you take advantage of this sale before it goes away. And click this video here if you wanna see exactly what I'm buying in this market and click here to see my exact plan for this market. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.